And so when it comes to, again, the background of high carb, then I, as much as it pains me to admit, because I'm such a defender of, of saturated fats from natural sources, I, I, which is where they come from, that begins to be problematic. I, I think it's problematic and not just, you know, for, for, for metabolic health, but cardiometabolic health. I mean, that's where you get small, dense LDL yep. particles. Again, it's the combination of the saturated fat and the re refined carbohydrates. Now, yeah. are we talking about when you're having a you know, high saturated fat diet in combination with what you call carbohydrate, high carb? I mean, is this, what if you're eating, you know, fruits and vegetables and, you know, maybe yeah. some oats? Is that the same as yeah. eating cookies and processed right, foods? Right. Yeah, no. I'm, of course, the easy answer would be no. But but I can't recall the specific the specifics of that study. And anytime I can't cite a study, I want to be careful in the answer. But my view would be: What is the underlying insulin effect of those carbs? So if these are low glycemic load type carbs, where the insulin response is going to be very modest, right? Insulin itself causes insulin resistance, and again, rapidly. And and so what I think is. If you take the context of an insulin spike with a saturated fat load, that's uniquely harmful with regards to insulin resistance. So back to the idea of what are the carbs, I think if you're talking about the low glycemic load carbs, like cruciferous vegetables and berries and citrus fruits, for example, no, there's almost nothing. And then you chase that down with a tablespoon of coconut oil, the most, sat the most concentrated form of saturated fat on the planet, I think you're fine. Well, coconut oil is a bit of a, an outlier because so much of it's MCT, which doesn't follow, which is not a substrate for ceramides. So it doesn't quite fit. 